that we expended it all. That's well, estimated. That's estimated. Oh, okay. Which you can't use it or lose it. Yeah. Yeah, this is the use of the I expect it to answer. So far, uh, $840 was spent on one series of items. Uh, $50 of, and $350 was given to the Main Street 90 for the Senior Citizens Dance, and that's been it. So, $840. You spent about $2,000, excuse me, about $1,200, so mm -hmm. $1,300. But there's, there's yeah. one other thing that's kind of hanging out there that I think is... There are several. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember what they are. <laughs> you, you placed another order for store, an item. Yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a going away gift for Captain Tolan coming out of this. Yeah. Uh, which, which isn't a substantial expense. I don't want them to be no. wearing that. No. 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 We certainly no. hope he's not watching. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Years, but you know, I don't know what all the committees are going to be proposing between now and year end. I have heard of one of the committees, and my mind escapes me right now, of exactly what it is that they're coming in for. But it's something that you know sounds reasonable, and they want they want to tap the contingency. Didn't account. we put some money into printing or something out of this contingency fund? The Main Street ninety. Wasn't it more than three hundred fifty dollars? Uh, no, didn't we for the, uh, for the historic historical plot. Well, right. Yeah. No, that's that's a that's seventeen thousand dollars that's separately funded. The know your town. Know that's, your that was funded elsewhere. I thought we uh, were putting some money in for that uh, history of Cape Elizabeth book to get it printed, 17. and then they were going to. No, and that money will come back over time. But right. Seventeen thousand dollars. Yeah, but where where does that show up? Where does that show up? <laughs> it's that's in this year's book. Just so you know. It's, it hasn't been, ex a little bit of it has, has been extended. It showed up on account 0720 something or other as an unfunded uh, amount. However, what will happen is the, the auditors will set that up as, a, as an account receivable, recognize the asset as the books, recognize the liability as the expense. So it that shouldn't, it shouldn't it have It shouldn't come out of the contingency. It doesn't need to come out of the contingency. Is there a $2,000 thing in my, for some reason, it's more like another two will cost of that book. <coughs> we talked about six hundred dollars for the uh, taping of the budget workshops mm -hmm. if there was an existing yeah. money in the uh, okay. mm -hmm. cable account, but I can't remember two thousand dollars. Also, I get very minor things some like when Mrs. Bias was here for the right. you know, so they wanted a hundred dollars, but that so I ended up I ended up taking that out of another account. But oh. I once in a while I <coughs> cap this account for something like that yeah. that you know, they want an answer. I'm not going to call a council meeting to, you know, for $100. Uh, well, an $8,000 contingency is very small, I think. And it's small. Yeah, small. Yeah, small. Very small yeah. for unexpected things that can come up during the year. And it used to be a whole lot larger than that, not that many years ago. Yeah. It became the 8020 I think, last year as a way of balancing the budget at a certain amount. Four point three million even. Uh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michael. <coughs> Council goals implementation last year. This included forty-seven thousand nine sixty-one for the land acquisition fund and eight thousand dollars for our goals implementation, which was essentially the comprehensive planning uh, to keep that moving. This year, uh, proposing five thousand for your goals implementation, which is in a way a contingency fund depending on what your goals happen to be, and zero for the land acquisition fund. I had sent out a, a memo to the Conservation Commission that I provided a copy to the council that has an error in, in terms of the fund balance of the land acquisition fund. In looking at the numbers, when I was trying to do this quickly the other day, when you look at the expenses for this year, I had forgotten that the 50000 that was given to the land trust was actually in this fiscal year. And you know, back at the time we were discussing, I kept saying, that there was going to be a hundred thousand balance, and suddenly it showed up 156, and I asked myself what went wrong. So this past week, I looked again and searched. You know, why was I wrong? And the reason I was wrong was because of the 50,000 donation to the the land trust that was made. So the the correct land acquisition fund balance as of the close of this fiscal year is projected to be 100 100,000 dollars, give or take, 
couple of thousand, it'd, it'd, it'd be a couple of thousand more there, but not, it'll be a little bit more than 50,000 because that won't be accruing interest either. The gold implementation from last year is $8,000 to yep. get this comprehensive plan completed, which we hope to have finished in this year, yep. to have it all fine-tuned and whatever needed to be written to satisfy the state requirements so it could be submitted for approval. Right. Um, where is it in that process? The comprehensive plan? Yes. Maureen, I discussed it with, uh, after speaking with you about it uh, on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever the day was, Thursday it must have been, and uh, she is in the process of uh, looking at the work plan that needs to go in with it. One of the issues is, it's the one that was alluded to a little while ago, is that you know that work plan really needs to prioritize what's going to be done, and what I told her to do was to look at the original memo of that was given to the council of what we needed a planner for in, in the packages and to include package one as what ought to go in the work plan and to make sure that the town center, if it wasn't part of that, would be part of that. So that's what we're looking at. Okay, but we're still not ready to um, submit for final approval? Um, I, I'm i going to give a deadline uh, on that pretty quick because uh, What's happened is uh, everyone is so thrilled to have a planner on, they want the planner to do everything, and they, they keep pulling at her in several different directions. And I, my feeling is it's nice to do these other things, but the number one priority has to be to make sure the planning board has the materials every month, and number two, before anything else, has to be to get the comprehensive plan. Well, that was the way it was yeah. all presented. We all agree to that, but I'm still concerned that the comprehensive plan is not ready for printing yet. Because I've you. seen the draft, I was looking yeah. through the old drafts, and two years old. I share your concern. Around. I share your concern. And we don't want to print it until the state. Right, and we still have things to do before we submit for final approval to the state, is that right? You're absolutely right. And so another town has already had this approved. So yeah, but we will be the first town that submits it in our tier. In our tier. In our tier. We also were ahead of everybody else. What what account is the money in for the printing of that? That as soon as we send it in, the state will send us a check for one third of our total grant uh, for the for the uh, conference plan. You better get it that quick. Mm -hmm. okay. well, <laughs> the state has encumbered the funds. We oh, did send okay. that in. Once it's encumbered, we're supposedly safe. Well, don't spend it no. before we have it. So the full cost is going to be paid for by the state? This of printing? Yes, because we have already paid out enough in local cost. And, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they challenge us, we can say what Murray's time can be charged up to us. We're, we've met our local match requirement already. So that's the council account. On the council bill's implementation, I'm going to stay very distressed about the lack of funding for the land acquisition fund. Would like us to be able to revisit this and see what kind of situation we're in after we finish the rest of the budget. I, my feeling is that this is another one of those accounts that if you don't fund it for one year, it gets lost by the wayside. And I think that would be doing a great disservice to everybody. What is the general feeling about that? Uh, we should revisit. Mm -hmm. revisit. Revisit. We have another Saturday on our schedule. We do? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> it's getting late. Getting late. It's 24. Yeah. Oh, it just seems like it's night time. <laughs> <laughs> it's just really nice to. Are there any other, uh, day, so. I, any other uh, revisiting or comments about the, uh, the town story? How about we go to elections, page 71, count 140. No? <laughs> Mrs. Pizzo, the town clerk, is here to no, I can present the election about it. Been waiting since eight quarter of eight this morning. Is that why you were here? She didn't want to miss all of Very patient. <laughs> Very briefly. 
The FY92 uh, elections budget, I have proposed to increase uh, $1,500. This is specifically due to one additional election during the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, we would look forward to a November 1991 referendum election, May 1992 municipal election, and June 1992 presidential primary. The specific accounts that um, will be increased due to this um, one more election would be the 1002 account, the part-time payroll, the 1003 account, the overtime payroll. Um, if you will note on printing and advertising, I did increase that slightly. Um, I feel with um, a possible increase in voter um, turnout, I did want to put some more funds in for um, ballots for the municipal election and possibly there could be increases in the purchase of those ballots. Miscellaneous supplies um, I am holding to $200 and the outlay account is increased um, due to the programming and election support fee that we would have to pay for the June presidential primary. Uh, there are no equipment purchases proposed. There are no, you know, any of that type of thing. That, um, I have put in the equipment that we have uh, is satisfactory. We have plenty of um, voting booths and the voter tabulation machines are running superbly, so we will not need uh, any new equipment in that. June is not going to be a presidential primary. It's going to be a, just a June primary. It's 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 it is presidential, June of 92. Yes, it's June of 92. Yes, it is. We don't, you don't vote on president at a primary, if caucus. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. But it is a presidential. Senate, yeah. 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 It's a state primary, yeah. a presidential year. Yeah. Anyway, I look at it the presidential year, yeah. so that we look for yeah. more, um, we have more ballot clerks on and that type of thing, so that's how I was. I just didn't want to sound mm -hmm. remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Any particular questions or clarifications for our, our town clerk and administrative assistant? Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm losing your hand. Debbie was speaking to me here a while ago about the photos of res registration going over the voting list and trying to reduce down the vote. Is that anything you'd like to add to that? It's um, a tremendous job and you're probably getting some phone calls. Yeah, we're getting some phone calls, we're getting some cards back with some interesting notes on them. Um, <laughs> we are trying, as I said, to purge the list. They are, uh, the voting list is very outdated. Um, there are many, many people that have left the community and that should be removed from the rolls. There are um, some folks that um, are deceased that um, for some reason we were not alerted to take them off from the rolls. Um, there are several folks that are on the voter list and uh, perhaps in the elections that we took to see if they had voted, they had not voted in those. So we are getting um, some comments from them to please leave them on the our taxpayers. We understand that, but this is really the only way we have to purge the list. Um, we will know in approximately one month um, we have to give them 30 days to respond to the cards, and all but 100 cards have been sent out. So we'll know in about 30 days how we stand with our tallies. How many cards are you sending out? Approximately 2,000. Oh, how many have you gotten back to and they still want to be on the list? So those that want to still be on? How many have you gotten back <laughs> those cards? Oh, well, some of them, they're not all angry, but a lot of them are quite no, Probably 40 or 50. Right. That might be a little bit, you know, high, but... Well, I thought this would be a good time to point it out so there might be a few people out there watching and someone would understand what she's up to. Yeah, I've also put an article in Kate Curry that should have been in this edition that came out today. More of a commercial message on that. We have 7,200 7, registered voters in our registered voters list. And we have 8,800 residents, <laughs> 16 of whom are in our schools, 100 of whom are in other secondary and private schools, 
and 540 of which are under the age of five. <laughs> so it is severely uh, overpopulated with names. So. Interesting, some of them are students who have lived here for years and I'm coming in the population, but for, you know, maybe their parents run for town council or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> they still want them on the voter list. I should have said that. But you did. I hope we don't lose any funding for purging our list based on per capita voters for municipality. Debbie, thank you very much. You. Boards and commissions, page 75. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Uh, boards and commissions, uh, again, this is another area that has seen some reduction. Uh, uh, Part-time payroll includes the, the, the two women, the woman who attends the meeting of the planning board, the zoning board, and takes uh, those very excellent voluminous minutes. Uh, it includes the time she spent as well as the part-time secretary who uh, is currently in Florida, but that serves in the planning office helping get out the packets and just does a, a great job. Uh, they're both retired from other positions and they're a really great asset to, to our community organization. Uh, printing and advertising is for all of the uh, ads that, that are put in for uh, the ads for the zoning board and for the appointments committee and the printing for all of them. And uh, do, they do a, a photocopy machine that's really strong doing notices. Uh, conferences and meetings is for a lot of times uh, I'll get a call that the cable TV committee wants to attend something the only board wants to, and I always work with them. What was the conservation camp that was eliminated? That was the, they used to go to Bryant Pond to a conservation camp, they used to sponsor a student to do it. Or, two students and it actually hasn't been done in about four years and I gave the, the, the benefit of the doubt a few years and now after I, I just didn't propose that it be funded. Thank you. I, I have spoken with Bill Wadman about it and he, he, he said as long as we can get stamps and we have some money to do uh, some of their odds and ends of testing uh, it, it was fine. He felt they could live within the summer. The, the Arts Commission cut from 3,500 is I think one of the cuts that really bothers me the most in the whole budget because for the most part it really tried to support volunteers and, and what they're doing and you know the Arts Commission I think is really lively and active now and uh, I really feel bad about that cut. Uh, the other is uh, just for miscellaneous odds and ends of border commission comes in and can we do this at cost X and the library did a little pamphlet this year and different things and that's what that money's for. I share the manager's concern about the cut to the Arts Commission budget. I think this is a group that we've seen more or less rejuvenate themselves in the past year or so. And it's so nice to have local cultural events to attend that are, are of very good quality, the ones that I've had a chance to be present at. I've been very impressed with what they've managed to do with still a very small amount of money. And would like you know, to hear what the rest of the counselors think and consider revisiting this to see if we can increase the amount for the Arts Commission. Michael, how much money have they expended over the past two years, perhaps, of their budget? I'm not sure this year. I think the memo that I sent to them that you have a copy of, I'd already skip to the next the section. Uh, <coughs> they haven't spent a whole lot of it so far this year. But a lot of it is. They, their activities aren't necessarily predictable as to when they do them. You know, they just had the Mardi Gras. Uh, they usually tend to have things in the summer and the spring. They well, they, they've also also had a policy of not charging, yeah. uh, charging very, very minimal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, so once again, if we mm -hmm. cut this, they may be able to do the same thing but charge. For whatever it's worth, I happen to, to be speaking to two of the members recently, and they their understanding about the nature of the, the tightness of the budget. That's what I was going to comment on. They don't seem to have the concern that we do. Yeah, I would agree. 
Well, is there a general feeling we ought to revisit this uh, or not? I don't think so. My personal feeling is that they're satisfied with it. Okay. Well, they haven't been spending that now. They haven't been spending 1500 They haven't been spending 3000 What happened? But you don't know what they have been spending. I don't know. This says $290. Mm -hmm. so, so far this year. Yeah. yeah. Seems like it might be enough. Rosemary? This report says I've spent $290 so far this year. Okay, let's not, and I think that was, was that the one you just got a few days ago? That was just this month. Excuse me. That was just this month. Sorry. Uh, Carl? I was going to say, I think that, that any board of commission that has an opportunity also to enhance revenues at all should try to do that and not just take that they have a budget to spend and let's do that, that because if they could generate even if it's minor it still offsets and I think with something like that anyways it's the type of event that people would be willing to pay so. some of what they do is sponsor it's not all revenue driven some of they, they they have little exhibit open houses when the when the exhibit first opens the library they put on the reception for the for the artist and you know you don't collect money for something like that uh, you know, looking at the budget, that appears quite a bit. You know, they, they usually run about $25, not a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'd ever be stipulating on something like that, that uh, this is a uh, non-profit uh, commission in town people with just donations are graciously accepted. Rosemary, does uh, Michael's clarification mm -hmm. of your numbers change your feeling at all? No, I, like you, spoke with board commission members and they didn't share our concern. The concern I had at that point. Okay, let us proceed on to page 205, uh, count 610, Town Hall. This is to, it helps to maintain this building. It's a almost exact halving of the budget uh, from 36000 down to 18000 $5,800 for electricity for the Town Hall, 1700 for water and sewer, 3200 for miscellaneous building repair and maintenance. Uh, we use 8,400 gallons of oil. <coughs> And there's no outlay proposed. What we had earlier hoped to do before the budget constraints hit is finish the last couple of windows that, that needed to be replaced for uh, uh, upgrading windows. Uh, there's some the carpet up in the front town town tax office is really starting to get bubbly or wavy, and you know that's a concern because it comes, becomes dangerous. Some could trip on it. Uh, that would have been addressed. Uh, as we got the roof done. That was essentially it. There was a planned reduction in this year's budget in that time anyway. Is there any carryover from this year? No, whatever is left over will lapse into the general fund at the close of the fiscal year. Well, why don't we use that for somebody's project? Listing the paint on the sunny side of the town hall. That we're going to do out of the, the other, just the general building repair and maintenance. Okay, but is there enough there to address those windows? No. The, the major problem is, you know, this back hallway here, you look above the door, and the plaster's coming out from when the roof was leaking, and we've been getting the estimates to, to do both of the hallways going up on, on either side of the, the boys' stairway and the girls' stairway, for those that went to school here. And uh, it, uh, you know, we, we keep... You know, people come in applying for general assistance, and we try to get them interested in doing it. You know, for a particular a painting background at all, and you know, we're, we're going to tr try to address it somehow because they're out there in tough shape. That's the other major concern that's not being addressed. We're, we're going to continue working at it and find an innovative way to get it done. The windows that you talked about, I didn't quite get where were they located? They they tend to be in some of the stairwells in those areas, not in the abandoned offices. All the ones in the offices have been done. But it would be a heat saving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they're also not, most of those windows are the ones that, they haven't been done because they are in better shape of our windows. I'm not. It's it a good just, time to do it at time. Yeah, it was, it was the way, we wanted to finish the program, but I, I can't say that, you know, there, there'd be a one-to-one -one benefit immediately doing it. It's just, it was looking for some conformity. And, you know. They can wait. They can wait. They can wait. Mm -hmm. Other comments? Uh, 
comments with regard to the 610 town hall account? We're also investing funds to improve the parking lot this year, which is doesn't show up here through the through the bond. So you know, it's not as if nothing's going on. Going once. H209. This is the account of 1226 Shore Road. As I mentioned, we did get some correspondence with the council did from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pryland regarding it. But the, the budget itself, uh, we are proposing to put a telephone over there. Uh, the cost is coming here would be $340. $600 for electricity, water, and sewer. Currently, it's not on sewer, but the water would be $200. Building maintenance, lots and ends, 500, keep 1350 for a total of 2990 That's That's the proposed budget for 1226 Shore Road. The custodial services will be provided by the town hall custodian as part of his regular work assignment. Questions? Well, we obviously are, are not going to have time to read the, this particular correspondence right now. Um, yeah, that involves a larger issue of, you know, why was the property purchased? And some feeling that perhaps it shouldn't have been. And, uh, I think that's probably a larger policy issue than simply the $2,990. Mm -hmm. when, when do you feel that, that it would be occupied? Somebody would start using it? We opened bids. Friday afternoon for the site work to be done. Uh, one of the firms that proposed, actually the, the, the low bid was submitted a joint project of DeRuca Hoffman and Terrian Architects. So what I, what I plan to do is to try to get Terrian Architects to, to at the same time to add on to it the little bit of work that needs to be done on the inside. And I'm gonna push the process to major delay the work isn't going to take much time. What's going to take the time, or could take the time, is to get it through the boards. Where is the money for that? It was in the uh, bond that you approved a meeting or two ago. When you well, did the, same the, night you, the same night you discussed the public works, but it was that same night. So. Any questions or clarification? But the, there are people out there who could say that we did purchase it, but at the time we did purchase it, uh, times weren't as tough as they are now, and I think that, that uh, <coughs> we should go ahead now that we have purchased it, and it doesn't look so as good. At this year, it would be a very large budget, but I think in the future, it will probably increase. As far as maintenance, who's going to do the maintenance on janitor or the custodian here at the town hall. We'll send them over there to do that. The, and the, the parks division of public works most the lawn. Uh, we do have a tax loss that it was it was assessed at two hundred and twenty five thousand. We paid hundred and ninety for it, so we do have that that loss of the taxation income two twenty five times whatever the tax rate is. It's about three thousand dollars. Which but, we discussed at that time yeah. we Right. The no, it wasn't neglected. I agree with that. But I mean, I think people ought to know some of our thinking at the time that we didn't probably do as much maybe as we should have in some of those fine points. I think it's, it's uh, maybe it's out of place to comment, but, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people are questioning it now. I think following up on the point you made, when the council made that decision, the economy was far better than it was. And, uh, you know, I. People a whole lots of things. They question, you know, why are we doing this right now? And it was budgeted a year ago, and we're following through on the plans. And I'm not just talking this property, but in general, why is, people expect everything to stop at times? And you know, that that is neither healthy nor nor uh, is it necessarily fiscally prudent. I'm speaking in general, not just. Other thoughts about the uh, short road account. Let us proceed to the Fort Williams rental units, page 213. These are for the two buildings that the four was generally been appropriating $2,000 a year. The council has been appropriating $2,000 a year for those two buildings. One of them is going to have a new tenant this year. 
I haven't budgeted any revenue for it either. My hope is is that whatever money we have to put into the building as a result of changing tenants will be recouped through rent. But in, during the course of the, this next fiscal year, we can net net the cost to the expenditure. That's that. Questions? Sperling Church, 213. This provides for the uh, person who opens the church, and it provides for the utilities, and for the heat. In addition, the uh, Board of Historic Preservation Advisors, I think, is soon going to be presenting a recommendation for some other improvements. Uh, and that would be funded out of the Sterling Church Trust Fund, which was money donated uh, some time ago. Does that trust fund money have an account? Number. It's a separate no. It's, not it's a separate at all. no. The trust funds are okay. there's not a regular budget for it. Is there some way in the town report? Yes, they're in the town report. And any expenses from that particular trust fund, according to the trust agreement, the trust document, whatever one calls, specifically have to be approved by the council upon the recommendation of that or that board. Should they be avoided? That is what we're Questions. Where and what purpose does the telephone at the church serve? It's uh, two two purposes. One is that it dials the alarm company whenever the alarm goes off. It's a, it's a dialing system, mm -hmm. so we need the phone in there for that. The second is uh, it's one that's plugged in and out by the caretaker. But the primary function of it is it's it serves as the alarm dialer for the alarm system. Could you set up six hundred and fifty dollars? No I just don't understand if, if it's basic minimum, you know, rate and all the other accounts are spent five hundred dollars. I can uh, the transfer station and a few yeah. others. I don't understand why it goes up so high. I mean it seems like piddly, but I think I know what it is, but let me check. You know, it's almost it's almost worth putting a cellular phone in there at two fifty a year, and then it dials out once or twice. You have to pay for an alarm system. Thirty six thirty one a month. We pay the normal telephone. That's to hire the lines. Yeah. For, to run the alarm system for the phone. It doesn't add up. That's a basic. That's a basic. Yeah. Four thirty five. But I took the six fifty by looking at the five twenty six during nineteen ninety. You know, the extended city expense mm -hmm. last year, that's yes. where I got that. <coughs> but I mean, there shouldn't be any calls out of there other than local service. I mean, that <coughs> should get down the calls. It's, we have had some that the alarm system we've had problems with, and for some reason it automatically dials Camden, and it's 40 <laughs> cents a call. And we've dealt, yeah, we've dealt with the phone company that one time we had them remove it, and then they said, well, it's your phone dialing it. And we've, we've gone back and forth with them, and. At one point, we got almost a page of Camden every minute. Uh, that is because um, there are certain alarm companies that use a central answering service in Camden. There are several yeah. alarm companies in the state have a central. Yeah. So that you do get that long distance call. Well, we'll yeah. back so maybe you company. need to, uh, maybe need to have a different alarm company. Yeah, when we, we did have that problem this past year, and we were security engineering the alarm company. And we get after them, and they made good on the alarm system charge on the other end. There, there was a okay. there was a compensated amount. So perhaps we don't need to. Well, right now, as I said, it's thir yeah, it's thirty six, uh, whatever amount. You might be getting billed for the for the wires that runs the alarm system, and you might be getting billed for a phone. Yeah, so you've got fee. two separate things here now, but you'll find out that you There is a fee for the other one. Yeah. Well, I think we can have Michael look into that. Perhaps if it, if it is uh, roughly in the $600 ballpark, why don't we keep that <coughs> request there for the moment and not officially revisit it right. other than having Michael report back and what he uh, finds out. Other comments? Well, 6.30 is the next one, Public Safety Building. We did do it. Yes, we did. That's right. Did that. 6.10 the next one or 6.60? 6.60, the trees. 
trees. This is the stipend for the tree warden and the item men's maintenance of uh, uh, trees. <laughs> Tremaine. It's getting late. It's getting late. I wish we could have uh, kept up the level we had right before, thing. but tree is budget cut. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the, the tree account? <clears throat> you know, on your tree maintenance, I take it, that's contracted out. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, Billy, <laughs> but the contractor yeah. was out of business <laughs> instead of <laughs> that. <laughs> Else I guess when I ask one question, I understand it's being done line. in other places. You know, when they take out a tree, like this time of year or something like that, why not our public works pick up and try and tip the brush and pick it up? And all the contractor does is put the tree down. I suppose you have an agreement that they do everything. Why can it be kind of a dual type thing if they weren't too busy? No reason we couldn't. Our oh, public works crew, generally, they did all of, I don't know if it was Father or Charles and Jordan, but going down to spray. They, they do, what we tend to do is send them into the areas where they won't do, I, this sounds right, they won't do any harm, where, where it isn't as dangerous. <laughs> we don't want them out on the main roads as much. They, uh, the workers' comp rates for tree work are about 250% of salary uh, for obvious reasons. So. You know, we generally have hours do the work that's not out on the main streets. For, uh, is it because they're on the main street? The yeah, but if, or is it the, no, but it's, uh, it's the work is on the main street. Is. No, we could look at it if, if the tree companies happen to be working somewhere where, you know, for example, right now they're doing some work in the port. As well as our, our crew is doing a lot of work in the port. There's also some higher things that the other crews are doing. We could look at it. Does the 14,000 cover new trees? If we, did any, if we did any, I really work very closely with Rick and leave it up to him to uh, what he recommends for that. Okay, I bring that up because I've heard from a fairly reliable source of the possibility of state money um, for a new tree purchase on the matching, matching of the towns but proposing to expand. We might hear about that in the next month or two. Yeah. The, the so local, I hope some of this is for new trees that we can yeah. apply to that kind of match. There's also a committee in the local Rotary Club that is going to be planting some elms. Oh. I, that won't be this five or six years. Yeah, they, yeah they're, they're, start, they're starting to buy the elms now to plant the later replanting. Yeah. What, what happened to the Gladys Brown money that was left for trees? Is there any money left in that? Yes, there, there is still trees? some. Yeah. Okay. So we got some money if we yes, come along. So if there is some matching funds. I do it, Jim? No, no, it's looking. Okay. Yeah, revenues, revenues, revenues now. $4,000. $4,000. $4,000. $4,000. No, the lights didn't. Oh, kind of those are bright. <laughs> you get the 710 account, too? Yeah, the sunscreen on it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, the Council of Governments, dues, and the main municipal association. Questions on the intergovernmental assessments, down 6% over last year. 1996, we're all done with the transit district as I read this. That's right. That's correct. Staff for the bus route. The buses that were purchased while we were a member in we were responsible for that. Yes, a total of 2,650 this year. Council of Government fees have gone up. Uh, I haven't seen the COG budget yet, but uh, I'm assuming you know that they will be up anywhere from zero to five percent. Plus, the, we also take the joint services fees out of that account. That doesn't just include this. You get that much saving in the year? Well, I think COD does a whole lot of different things. Uh, 
yeah, that not necessarily just resulting in dues. The dues is ten thousand nineteen dollars. The dues portion. I'd say we get more from that than from the county. You get a lot from the county. You don't realize that you get from the county. Yes, sir. Just editorial item. Okay, unless I've missed an account, we have the revenues to deal with. Yep. Page 36. This is the saddest news of the budget and why so much of the other news is so sad. Uh, why don't we go through it beginning on page 38? The uh, interest in late charges, it's interesting. This year we've already collected 43000 but I, I'm getting real nervous about, even about the 33,000 because suddenly this, our tax collection rate is way, way up. Yeah, because the end, the end pay, the, <laughs> part of why we're up so high this year is we indicate all the past due taxes. And, uh, you know, it might be tough to reach the 33, but it's a, if that happens, that'll be good. Never happy. I know. Ex, excise taxes, uh, I think you know the story there, keeping you updated every month on how they're coming in again. This past month, we were at uh, the lowest level for the equivalent month that we've been in in about five years. Fees for registration, those are the fees the state allows us to charge for registration, $2 per, per vehicle. Uh, the clerk's fees, are a bunch of miscellaneous fees for dog licenses. And, uh, excuse me? Certified copies. Certified copies. Uh, hunting licenses. Would we keep marriage licenses, all of those. Police fines and fees. Uh, is this, I want to look at more aggressively collecting existing fees, including the alarm monitoring fee, which is already in the books. Library fines and fees are about the same. Uh, miscellaneous receipts, uh, that includes all of the photocopy charges and all the checks that come in that we haven't budgeted for. They go to this kind. It also includes that the amount that's going from the sewer fund to the general fund to help pay for administrative expenses. That's the the difference you see between the 18 and 23 when that was added in as an additional amount. Investment income. Uh, somewhere here, I have the latest update on uh, where our investments stand. What, what this shows is, I think very, very clearly, is a year ago we were collecting at the rate, the interest rate we were, we were obtaining was 8.16%. Now we're obtaining 6%. That's a difference of about 25% reduction simply in terms of rates when you also look, we may not have, have as much money. So, you know, we're, we've really been hit. The uh, just the last, the key rate you see there for Key Bank, for the one that was put out on 222, we could have obtained a rate on that day of 7.65 in, in the bids that we got from, from all from good banks. Because of the need to collateral, collateralize, we left 165 basis points on the table and instead accepted a, a 6% rate. Uh, overall, our, uh, our investments now are about 2.1 million. Uh, secured is 94%, unsecured is 6% or $127,000. The unsecured amount is, is the cemetery fund uh, CD, which matures on March 6th this coming week. So after this week, we'll be 100% secured. That's where we stand on investments. One thing I'm looking at, I, I mentioned at the workshop the other evening, is to, to look at a trust agreement bidding it out with our banking services so that hopefully we can do a little better with the rates than we're now doing. The classroom lease portables, that's for the three different units uh, from the school department, 105400 totally. There's no money, excuse me, no money from that going into the surface fund. That's how it was originally set up. This is still, we've changed that policy late policy decision a year or so ago, I believe. And I just want to make sure we're still going to keep it changed. Yeah. Which is too bad. Proposal. Yeah. Stay
state revenue sharing, who knows? Uh, I proposed a slight decrease. Uh, we really don't know what the state is going to do with that. And particularly, I'm not sure exactly what the effect is of our low evaluation proportionate to the rest of the state. That may have an effect as well. So hold our breath on, on that particular issue and continue over Positive effect? It could have a negative. So um, I plan to look at that, particularly over the next month before the budget's adopted, uh, in, as the state continues whatever the legislature whatever plans to do. Uh, miscellaneous state, 23000 that includes half of the general assistance money back, 10000 from growth management, which is the minimum amount I think we'll get back. We get 2000 from the state parks uh, for taking the trash and everything else, and 1000 miscellaneous includes three growth and other is there a li library stipend in the that's, that's a whole hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. I love the form for that last week. Enjoy it. I just signed it. Uh, unappropriated surplus last year was 190600 That helped fund the budget this year. It's proposed to be zero. Uh, that's right. It's a major hit on the budget. So they did, we also collect 3600 for sparing church fees. We don't collect any fees for recycling because of uh, all of that now goes to regional waste systems. Uh, there's, we get quarterly local road block grant from Maine Department of Transportation. That's about 62000 a year now. Is that those all monies are safe. Yep. Pardon me? We think those monies are very safe. So we get those to use on road You're supposed to use them for highway purposes. Uh, the girl, the daycare center, we're projecting $6,800 in rent there. They pick up all the utility expense. For the Girl Scout building, they're going to be moving out in August. I, again, I haven't projected any revenue, but nor have I projected the expenses to upgrade the building when they leave. Uh, cable franchise fee, we still haven't received the check for this fiscal year, but it looks like it'll be about $15,000. Yes. Do other towns seek the 3% in the premium services? Some of them do receive it because of the franchise fee agreement has slightly different language than ours. We haven't approached the cable company on it since they started listing it as a separate charge on the bill. They used to have to take it out of their revenues. Now they list it as a tax. So if you if you added it on to try to get them to add it on to HBO and Cinemax, Disney and pay-per-view, what would happen is that would, that would be an additional tax on all those who receive those premium services. You know, if you said if you say you want to do that, then I could approach the cable company. And try I thought to get we had direction. already approached them several times on yeah. just that item. You did, but it was back. It was when they used to pay for those. They had a fee of X per month, and they paid the franchise fee out of that. One of the hidden rate increases, one one this past year, one of all three, was to uh, add that on as an extra on the bill, three percent. That now appears as a separate line. And since they changed to that policy, so it's not coming out of their pocket, we haven't approached them. They don't list that as a tax, do they? Yes, they do. That's illegal. They live well, they list the franchise fee in the amount. Not the word tax. No, they don't use the word tax. I think that's something for us to consider. <coughs> Have you figured how much revenue that would generate? They don't tell us what their proceeds are. From. Pay, pay special services. My guess is it would be, uh, it, I don't know, depending on the, I don't know how those services are doing now with the economy, but it ought to be at least half, half again of what that amount is, and then half <coughs> of the people get at least one of those services. So you expect at least $5,000? At least 5000 I think it's worth investigating. But it is, you know, that would be paid by the citizens to pay for it. But only those with those services? services? Only those with those services. They already are paying. No, then no. it's not put on their bill. No. Oh, the only thing not. that's put on their bill is 3% for basic service. This would be 3% for the special. Okay. Isn't the cable contract franchise agreement being renegotiated this year? Still a couple of years away. Interestingly, the, the contract says, and I know it's getting late, is that they can only charge for basic service and nothing else. And we began to push that point, and we didn't want to waste the money on legal fees to argue with. The council didn't, so that was where that last stood. But you know, we could we could renew that argument. You know, it, it's a policy judgment for the council. Do you do you, do you want them to? Do you want us to try to get them to bill it or not? 
What do other towns do? A lot of them, the people pay on all services. The, the issue in Cape Elizabeth is the fact that the, the language is a little more unclear in the franchise agreement. Mm -hmm. The cable company thinks that it is. Do, do we want to arrive at a consensus on that issue now, or? Want to revisit it? Revisit that issue of the 3%. It's going to be passed it's on. It's nothing that's going to help, help us if there's still you know, two, I don't think, anyway. You could. It could help you this year. A year. I approached them and they said yes, they could institute it any time. Let's revisit it. <clears throat> now we're getting to be like the state. If you want more revenue, just, we're just find someone it. else to tax. We didn't necessarily say ourselves. we're going to do it. We're just going to revisit the item. There's a chance to think about that philosophy. The, we on the boat excise tax. Yes. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous again because of the economy, and you look at the boating issue of revenue there, are projected 15,000, which is slightly less than last year. Building permits is divided in half down to 25,000. Subdivision inspection fee projecting zero, reduction from 19,000. You get money from binoculars at Fort Williams. All those people put quarters in from all over the country. And believe it or not, a year, year ago it added up to $2,500, and what our take was out of their own by another company. Our sole responsibility is to collect the money and to remit a certain percentage to them. I think we keep 40, they get 60. So for allowing them to have the binoculars there, and for them to find the binoculars, we get about 25 bucks a year. Buy our own binoculars? Set up about 10 or 20 of those? Things are fairly expensive, uh, those binoculars, if you look at them. I mean, they were, they're real sturdy in terms of whatever. Four farm proceeds is the water district lease. The library copy of revenue is self-explanatory, as is street opening, picnic shelter. Fort William TFs is for two dollars that the symphony is assessed and other groups uh, for uh, parking for special events. Uh, the police is the charge out of someone hires a police officer for uh, a special event. This is the, the revenue goes back more in permits, a thousand dollars. Those are the revenues, and they represent a total decline of three hundred and eighty-eight thousand compared to last year or nineteen percent. Three hundred and what? Uh, Three hundred and eighty-eight thousand. What is the uh, what are the wishes of the council at this particular point? We've reviewed all uh, accounts. Uh, we have a visit list. What will do? We need to set a date. Don't we? When are we going to revisit, Michael? Rosemary, please. Could we go over the list of what we're going to revisit? Michael, have you been, everyone's been keeping a tally. Why don't you go through it? Uh, the detective physician, the oil burner at the public safety building, light cars for the police cruises, the general issue of contracting out services, uh, the public works director's attendance at a conference, road resurfacing, uh, the computer for the public works department, the PC. The silver fund contribution, the interest rates that we're paying on our uh, bonds, uh, cable TV programming, whether or not there ought to be more money, Family Fund Day, the Leisure Center for the Handicapped, the Land Acquisition Fund, the phone that's spurring the church, which you want information on, not necessarily re revisit, mm -hmm. and the cable franchise fee. Roadway improvements. I've got that sort of under road reset. Billy's concern about the uh, projected propane costs. We I just brought that up. It's no big deal if you want to revisit. About a fifty dollar savings. If That's right. Yeah. I just brought it up. I can't touch it because I'm rushing. Any anybody else? Because I know we've all taken different notes. Has Michael not included anything that? Uh, okay. I'd just like to point out. I don't think this. Not too many of those revisits would take money away from the budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, okay. no, they don't. Really. <laughs> Well, that doesn't issue. mean we can't revisit other things that aren't on that list. Oh, no, no, right. no, but I'm just, as, a, as an outline, as an outline only. Uh, I just had a couple of things. Um, on the highway curbing, <clears throat> um, the damage that wasn't done because we didn't fall. Yeah. Just a rough guesstimate about how much money that might be. Also, that um, 
value of the um, salt that we saved for the same reason that we didn't have a lot of snow? I gave you a memo on that mm -hmm. earlier. So. No, and the thing is, I I don't know how much plow curbing damage we're going to do until the season's over because we've really done a job in late March sometimes when it becomes soft. Mm -hmm. That's when you, you tend to do the most curb damage at the beginning and at the end of the season because the ground's not soft. And the last thing I had was the shore road shoulder improvement language. That's right. We're going to find that exactly. Yeah. That's my last. There's one I didn't understand. I just want somebody to explain it to me sometime. The plan is so. I can explain to you very quickly right now. She is one of those we didn't hire at the, the top of the scale. And what you see is one amount for her for like I think 17 weeks, which is up to her first anniversary. And then on her first an anniversary, she goes to the next step, as in, as well as getting the 5% increase with every month since July 1. It's simply because we don't hire everyone at the top of the scale, is why there's that situation. The same thing with the children's library and a couple other positions. So, will she get in, in line? Uh, with the budget here the following year? Yes. Or will she always be this step deal during the year? No, this will be the, she was, because of her experience, she was hired at the third of the four, four steps, which she would be doing this coming, whenever her anniversary is, October, whatever it is, is she would go to the fourth step, and then beyond that, she would get the cost of living increase. What about salary issues in general? When are we going to talk about those? I mean, we have a little bit today, but I mean, the overall. What is this specifically the way to address? They are all 5% except for those steps plan remaining in effect mm -hmm. and the guy at Public Works, the, the highway form who's proposed to go on salary instead of the hourly. Uh, I think that's it. There, as you know, there particularly if we reorganize the school department is another issue I want to discuss sometime. Yeah. That'd be down the road. There, there is about three thousand dollars that's sitting here. Sort of an unallocated there's a, there's a revenue that's shown from the Riverside expense shown on the Riverside that isn't shown as a revenue here and that's one thing I kind of just left hanging there, be recognizing that somehow we're going to if we do a reorganization we're gonna to have to address that people take on more responsibility where the money's going to come from. Are, are we assuming these 5% increases are just automatic no matter how well it's important to pass you? Uh, if you, it is a cost of living, it is not a merit system. If you want to switch to a merit system, that's a policy issue with the town council. I love your answer, Michael. <laughs> I've heard that answer before because it I believe really in what you're saying. Yeah. But the cost of living or not, we didn't necessarily indicate that five percent of living was cost of living. So we were just trying to sort of stay more in line with the police for getting a five percent that it might mm -hmm. be more equitable if we considered that for other employees. I don't think you can call it a merit increase unless you have some criteria. Mm -hmm. The other, as I indicated on the memo, within that pay salary package you got on Thursday night, there was a written a memo about one of the, attached to a request from one of the employees who was concerned that his position didn't fit in with the comparable communities. And you know, as I said in my cover note, that is true of an, an, an awful lot of positions. And, it, you know, we can go back and forth until we're blue in the face on some of these issues and I think eventually you, you ought to get an independent non-biased person to, to look at the whole issue and to develop a new pay plan. Most of the other communities have done that. If you look at our salaries, we're not uh, in the comparable communities. Cape Elizabeth is not on top by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, we tend to be, if, if not at the middle, then on the lower end. We'd have to, I would have to deal with workload too. Yeah. It was, it's not mm -hmm. Complicated, it's not really as comparable size. It may not be as complicated, but the council has very high expectations and 
very high demands on, on our personnel. And I think that, that does complicate it. Uh, as, I, as I look at some of our staffing levels, again, when I look at other communities, I think we, you generally expect a lot and, and get a lot. Uh, when I look at the, the hours that some of our people put in, uh, it, it's really tremendous. Uh, well, I think if, if people are thinking about specific employees, then that would warrant really uh, more of an executive session uh, situation, uh, which could indeed be uh, <coughs> tacked on to the uh, end of revisiting um, the uh, issues we have before us today. If Te that's the yeah, technically, if you're discussing the performance of an individual employee under under Maine right to know law, you have to. That employee has to be invited to participate. Sure. Oh, I have right. no problem with that. Sure. I know I've never pushed the issue because I, it's not my interest to do so. You know, when you've done my own evaluation, but technically, the the employee is supposed to be present or have to be be invited to be present. So, if you do plan to discuss anyone in particular, it'd be good for you to let me know beforehand so I can make sure that individual is apprised that that's going to take place. Well, I don't think I'm here to, to uh, get into that, but I would like to discuss the position as you might say, of where we are, where we are in the pay scale around. You say we're low, but to the medium to low, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if I agree with you 100%. That, that may change after this year, because it that looks to true. me like 5% increase is going to be high. That is correct. That's Compared to other saying. computers. Well, again, certainly if we want to, uh, as, a, as an agenda item with our revisiting, look at the positions, you know, without the individuals, that's, uh, I think, a perfectly legitimate uh, issue for us to address. Then if we wanted to get into a position and the individual, I agree with what you said, is having present, but I think we should have the right to sit down and discuss a position and whether we think we are high, low, or different, or <coughs> inadequate, as you might say. That would have, that could be done publicly. Yeah. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Unless I just say we were talking about individual yeah. person, not talking about position. I think when everybody talks about salary, they also talk about fringe benefits. But I really hope that when we look at salary, we look at the economic benefit of a non-taxed fringe benefit mm -hmm. as part of the whole package. Mm -hmm. Because you're talking about health insurance. And yeah. every everything, not statutory, yeah. not mandatory, not workers' comp, not unemployment, you know. Uh, but really, the rest of them, because <clears throat> I've heard three or four times, and you know, I support making government a little bit more like business. And we um, we have always thought that municipal employees, or it appears that we always thought that municipal employees and school teachers you know, got paid less than the business sector, and so we gave all these fringe yeah. benefits. And I'll be honest with you, there are a tremendous amount of employees who have $3,000 worth of non-tax benefits more than um, people making $50,000 a year in some very large corporations. And that's worth $4,000 in salary. And I think in terms of employee morale and the general public that we need to say that because people don't realize what the economic benefits are. Mm -hmm. They look at their bottom line on their paycheck only. I think we really need to move to a cafeteria plan for, for benefits and hope this coming year to, to begin a, a process of studying how that might be implemented. I think it would be in everyone's best interest. I got two daughters that work for a little company yep. in the greater Poland area. And their benefits aren't as good as the town of Cape Elizabeth. They have the option of choosing what benefits that is within true. a certain pool of funds. And but I think that's the only, same way we should move. But they only pay a certain amount of it. If that's they right. want more than that, they have to pay it. Yeah. Well, let me suggest we take out our calendars and look right. for a <laughs> revisiting <laughs> time. We need to. Oh, I thought we had already <laughs> scheduled all of them. It's scheduled for March 25th.
Do we need to do it? Nothing scheduled until March 25th. We need 14th. 14th with the school board, then we'll March 25th. With the school board. School community services and review pending issues. Right. right. I'm not sure that that's going to Is that going to be enough time to do the review that we want? We may have to. We on the 18th. Another Monday night. I can't get my money to work. Well, let me ask this. Is there a general feeling that we need to have a separate meeting to revisit what we've spoken about today outside of these two further meetings if we, if we push those meetings a bit? To me, I don't think we have as much as we had last year to revisit, to be honest with you. Maybe we should try to revisit after we the school board. Michael, do you have an input in terms of given the scenario you know, last year to this year, just in terms of comparison. I plan to leave on vacation April 14th for yeah. 10 days, and my hope is that the budget will be adopted prior to that. <laughs> Can we make how, this? how you get to that point, that is <laughs> Can't we do this in our regular town council meeting as an agenda yeah. item? At the end, when everybody's turned their TVs off, or uh, yeah, but you know, it's eleven o'clock yeah. and it's people tired. are tired. It's it just tired. doesn't seem to work well. Uh, although the sixth, of course, we do have the town meeting. Uh, depending on how long that goes, we could spend an hour that evening or, or so, hour, two hours at the conclusion of the town meeting. That would at least be next Wednesday. And give us a. I don't think. That? I just don't. Not sure that that we don't know. How what kind of meeting that's going to turn out? To be. I'm not sure you can count Since on that. Since we have, yeah, and there are rumors the that early. certain issues are going to be brought up. Maybe along. You also got the issue that night is you don't the policy has been not to televise that in order right. so people really feel comfortable. And right, and we want then, to televise these. Yeah. Do we want to wait and see where we are? Can we start earlier on the time? Personally, I don't think so. I, I just don't think, unless we want to get into a major debate about the, the whole job situation and merit raises versus cost of living raises, I mean, I think that could be an, an evening in and of itself. But the material we have before us here, I mean, I think there are, uh, there are some yes and no's. I think we're all going to be leaving this meeting thinking about what we want to do in these areas. And as usual, it's going to come down uh, unless there's major uh, consensus to a, to a vote on each issue. Is that the general feeling to wait until the 14th and get a sense as to where we are after meeting with the school board? And Sounds fine. We, so be we it. couldn't do any of it after the 6th, you don't think? That well, that's the, the general feeling is that there may be a lot of interest well, that they, evening, they really, rather that. than the seemingly a lack of interest last year at the that's two right. scheduled town meetings. I'm hopeful that it would be. If mm -hmm. not on the bulletin board, then Monday. Monday. Was that Monday? Monday. John, I just changed it. He asked if on Monday. And to the school. Well, for, any, for anyone who is watching at this particular time, and I hope there are thousands watching, uh, just a reminder that the town council will be having a, a town meeting that will not be televised uh, this coming Wednesday at 7.30 at the library, the Thomas Memorial Library, the conference room? Community room. The community room. The community room. So please, any citizen uh, with any concerns whatsoever, please come by. It's an informal opportunity without the cameras, without uh, uh, the formality of the typical council meeting. Please come by and let us know your concerns. With that, I will adjourn this workshop. Thank you very much. Very good. Plus, TV lights are hot.